And now our tail of the tape for this lightweight fight. All right, now for the official introductions, the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Dustin the Diamond Poirier! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, Islam Makachev! You ready to fight? Ready! Good. All right, round getting underway, and we take a look at the Combat Sambo World Champion and UFC lightweight contender, Islam Makhachev. What will he do in this fight? Well, oftentimes he does whatever he wants to do. Certainly he can impose his will on the ground where his game is just so nuanced when it comes to the throws and the trips and the manipulation of joints and everything else. But on the feet, in a kickboxing setting, this man is proven to it as well. A true five-tool player who many believe, by year's end, could just be the king of the lightweight division. All right, so Dustin Poirier with a nice one-two there, DC. We'll see if he can follow it up. He has natural power in the right, but he's developed great power in the left. He's a problem, man. He's big, he's strong, and Dustin Poirier has unbelievable long arms for such a small guy. That's why the jab gets there so often, and it's so damaging to his guy. All right, clinch situation here, pursued by the wrestler. A nice job to get inside against the kickboxer, who candidly doesn't like this dirty boxing on the inside. He doesn't want to be close. He wants space. He wants things to look clean. This wrestler wants to grind on you and wants to wear you down. He wants to make you carry his weight for as long as you're inside the octagon. It is so exhausting and fatiguing to fight this type of fight. Big combination here of ground and pound strikes. Nice work by Islam Akasha. Constantly a moving target. He cut him. He cut him. So many ground strikes landed that eventually he got him cut. Elbow lands. He's got the single collar tie. Oh, massive diving punch flush to the head. All right, stacked guard here now. The feet are on the hips, DC, so for the top fighter, this is not at all ideal. No, this is not ideal, because now he has to try and stop his opponent from kicking him away. How do you do that? You attack the feet. You start grabbing the feet with the hands, lead with your hips, grab the feet with the hands, pass the feet to the side, and start to lead with your knee to try to get him side control. Punches and bunches as he lands another combination there. Really doing a nice job stringing his shots together. He's doing a great job of stringing his shots together and also just mixing up the target and the attacks. Great job finding different places for his strikes to land. Oh, high amplitude head kick! Oh, big right hand from the American top team trained Dustin Poirier. So many outstanding coaches out there, not the least of which is Mike Brown who finds himself firmly in Poirier's corner, as usual here tonight. Oh, nice elbow. All right, so perhaps he's going to have to address something defensively. There is a legitimate cut around his eye. Yeah, he got cut on the eye from that last strike. He's got to pay attention now before it gets worse. Throws a big right hand, but doesn't find its home. All right, he engages in a single power tie here. Well, perhaps it's a high flight IQ, perhaps it's obvious, but he is attacking that cut that is getting deeper by the minute. And it seems like the right decision, because you can see his opponent starting to paw at it. You can see it starting to take an effect, it's messing with him mentally. For him, he's got to continue to attack that area and hope that it just keeps getting worse and worse. Oh, take down there by his line of passion. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. Oh, he's trying to pin that arm in the triangle now. Ooh, this could be it. That thing is tight. That arm triangle is deep. That's tight. Oh, he got out. He actually bridged, got his hips up in the air, used his momentum to take him back towards his opponent's feet, chest down to the mat to get out of that deep submission attempt. Oh, he's got to be careful there, yep. Poirier's looking for an arm bar here. He is no one-trick pony. He's got it isolated. Oh, transitions to the belly down arm bar. That is 
a dangerous way to finish it off. Oh, he's got the knee on the belly. Could be trouble defensively. Mm, that was nice. All right, so some high-level stuff there on the ground, but as they make their way back to the feet, a huge response from the crowd, no surprise. I love, I love all the grappling that was on display there, but fight fans want to see striking, and that's exactly what they're going to get as he finally makes his way back to his feet. Oh, oh. Seth's cheek looks like it's cut here, starting to bleed a little bit now. All right, the round is over, and Poirier's bleeding from the forehead there a little bit. It doesn't appear to be too bad. The focus for the cut man, though, to make sure that he can stop the bleeding and not allow the blood to get into the eyes. Well, if you're the replay guy, a lot to like in that previous round. A lot of damage being inflicted. Yeah, I mean, and look at the swelling now, John. He wasn't doing what he needed to do to move his head, and he's paying for it. You cannot allow for an elite-level mixed martial artist to connect at that rate and think that you will not be wearing the damage. He's wearing it now. I'm interested to see what changes he makes Ready. to give himself an opportunity. Ready. Go. Round two on the way. All right, so as this next round gets underway, hopefully the good action we saw in the last round will continue. Both fighters certainly had their ups and downs. Both got the offense going. But now we'll see if one fighter... Oh! Some big shots, too. All right, so he continues to land, and not exactly what we thought we would see in this one tonight, but the rest were willing to stand and trade and proving to be able as well. Yeah, it's out of the ordinary. Usually this guy level changes. Guillotine jump! Fight IQ, a full display there. Recognizing he was losing the sub, elected to keep the dominant position. Nashev gets up, he is back on the feet. Looked like he was in a submissive state on the ground, but he worked hard there to get back to the front. Oh! He's in trouble, he's getting lit up. Oh, he still hurts, look at that. He can't even stand. Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking oh, moment. Yeah. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. Another shot right on that cut. You think his vision has been compromised at all? No, it, it has to, right? Because you got to be able to see to fight. And right now, he's been targeted in that area, and you can see it worse. Than it. Lands a beautiful leg kick. Poirier's body getting all sorts of bruised up on that right side now. Oh, big elbow. Oh, goes to the ankle pick now to get him down, DC. We'll see how he chooses to proceed from here. Got the ankle pick. Let's see how he advances from this position. Gotta be careful, Armbar. Ooh, that's tight. I'd be tight. It's starting to get really tight in there. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, he got out. How good is that? This guy is so aware. He never leaves anything long to allow for himself to get sub. Poirier's eyes closing up now. Not good for him. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. Pretty good ground and pound by him here. He told us on Thursday he needed to be more effective in these situations. Certainly effective tonight. Many people have gone away from the style of fighting. This man has embraced it. And you are seeing why he's one of the best that we've seen do it in a long time. Well, this is absolutely the hurt business. It's hard to see which party is more injured, but I think both fighters have been really affected with their strikes in this one. Yeah, both guys have been affected. Both guys have been beat up. It's a very competitive fight. Let's see who has the heart to carry them through these very tough moments. All these actions, though, these big actions got to wear on the gas tank of both guys. Poirier's really bleeding heavily now. You got to think they might bring in the ringside position to take a look at that cut between rounds. Oh, my goodness. He might have it. Oh, so how about that? The offensive fighter bails on the submission now. Very smart. He's got to keep position over submission. All right, working inside the closed guard now. This is no safe place against this opponent. 
Poirier gets back up again. All right, so he lands again, just like we saw in the last round, realizing a lot of success with his more time game team. You know why change it? It's working, and it's working from the... Yeah, looks a little lovely on his feet. He's hurt now. Big elbow there, Lance. Well, the octagon, not a great place to be when you're looking for a rest or a stool. He's gonna try to take him down. There you go. Take down here, he gets it. Oh, slams his opponent to the ground. Nicely done. Oh, man, another strike gets through. And now things are critical. We got a lot of blood, folks. Makashev's able to transition back to side control now. Man, this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head, like, through the kick. Oh, in good position to rip off the Kimura here. Oh, and that looks tight. Oh, the submission defense holds up and gets out. He said that he was ready for everything that would be thrown at him. In that position, he showed that. And through the Kimura, though. Oh, he's got the Kimura locked down. Great submission defense by this man. It looked like he was done. Oh, let's see if he postures up and can get some of his ground strikes going here. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in the submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. Well, that was a damaging five minutes. We'll see how he can recover over this 60 seconds. We'll show you some replays now from that previous round. He was on the receiving end of some big blows, and he wasn't moving his head well. His head was on the center line. He was a stationary target, and his opponent opened up a nasty cut on him. He has got to move his head to limit the damage that he's taking. You ready to fight? Ready. Third round underway. Throwing that low kick. So pretty good recovery by the opponent after getting stunned pretty good. Got to capitalize on those opportunities. He's hurt. He's hurt. Oh, big diamond punch to the head. You cannot sit in this position. Referee will have no choice but to stop the fight. Poirier's eye is at All right, setting up the arm bar here. Beautiful setup on that arm bar. Oh, that looks tight. Now he's out. The fight's going to continue. Oh, my goodness. I thought it was over. I thought this fight was over. Nice defense. All right, good guard here, DC. What does he need to do to improve position? Well, he's got to start to build his posture, get some damage off, move the half guard, which in turn leads to more opportunities for advancement. But if you're on the bottom, you've got to anticipate those movements the moment he tries to... Oh, he needs to fight now. Get him down. Now we'll see where he chooses to go from here. Got the ankle pick. Let's see how he advances from this position. All right, opens the guard. Now stacked guard. He did a great job securing that ankle pick but he did not react fast enough to secure the top position. And just like that, back to a standing position. We'll see who has the event. Well, you know, Rogan's pissed he missed this one. We are witnessing an instant classic. Back and forth we go. Both fighters have been on the cusp of being finished, and both have exuded a ton of heart. Yeah, they both show heart, courage, ability, technical skills. I can't really tell you how these two are still in the fight with the damage that they both are exhibiting on their face. All right, ref has called a break to the action here, likely to call in the doctor to look at that cut and a lot of blood donation going on right now. And for as fun as this fight has been, I can only hope that the physician still lets this guy fight. He wants to fight. He wants to continue. Let him go. I think the doctor's going to have to stop this fight. The cut looks like a slot machine. And yes, that is the end of the fight. So a disappointing athlete to be sure, but his opponent caused the damage. Yeah, caused the damage. And I agree with the stoppage. Great stoppage by the ringside official. Here's Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the doctor has called a stop to this fight. Declaring the winner by TKO Islam. Oh, how good was that? And this crowd enjoying every moment of it as he was able to use his entire skill set to get past 